Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we talk to you about a cool thing that we've been reviewing or testing out here in PC Labs. I'm Tom Brandt, this is Will Greenwald, and we're going to be talking to Google today uh, with a new uh, Google, enable, uh, Google Assistant enabled smart display. Uh, and before we do that though, we'd like to let you know that you can talk to Google too through us. Just type whatever you want us to ask into the comments. If you're watching us live on Facebook, we will be sure to ask Google for you um, or any other questions that you might have. If you're watching us later on, on YouTube or somewhere else, definitely come back at 10 a.m. on Monday where we will have yet another one cool thing for you. So this smart speaker slash screen is made by Lenovo, but it connects with Google, right? Yeah, it's the Lenovo Smart Display, and it's basically the Google Assistant version of the Amazon Echo Show, which itself is an Alexa speaker that just has a screen on it. This is a Google Assistant speaker like the Home Mini that has a screen on it. That's pretty much the main thing. Right, and so what you can do with this is basically everything that you would normally do with the Google Home plus some extra stuff. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the, it has a touch screen, that's the big thing. This uh, okay. is uh, available in 8 inch and 10 inch versions. This is the 10 inch one. You can see on the back, the 10 inch one has a bamboo uh, panel. This isn't removable or changeable, just this one's bamboo and the smaller one is sort of a soft touch gray. Uh, it is also, uh, you can turn it on its side, but the only reason for this is to, uh, well, use video chat. And you can only do that with Google Duo, not anything else. Uh, so it's a bit limited, like you can't just have the whole thing in portrait mode all the time, which is, you know, maybe they'll change it and update, that'd be a nice thing. But as it is, this is just, hey, if you want to ask Google Assistant anything and have visual information, or if you want to stream stuff to it, or play media, or whatever, it lets you do it right on the screen. So you can say, hey Google, what's the weather tomorrow? In New York City tomorrow, there will be scattered thunderstorms with a high of 85 and a low of 72. It gives you a nice, uh, you know, in, in sound effects as visual well. Visual yeah. forecast. <laughs> and indeed, we actually have the volume turned all the way up on this one. Uh, it is very loud. As you can see here, the, basically about it's a quarter loud. of the entire uh, unit is a speaker. Um, and I, presumably there's also some more um, speaker components back here. Sort of. As well. It's so a, the sound is very good. It sounds okay. It's a two-inch uh, mid-range slash tweeter with two, uh, it's a mid-range driver, two inches, 10 watts with two passive tweeters. So you're not gonna get a whole lot of sound out of this. If you're gonna spend 250 bucks on a, just a dedicated speaker, you can get way more power. Uh, like yeah, the, uh, so, so there you go though, $250. This 10-inch version, yep. $250. The eight-inch version, 199, right? Yep. Now, okay, so, but you were, sorry, I interrupted you. So compare this to like the Google Home Max or the Google Home. The Google Home Max is like twice as much. It's 400 bucks, much more powerful. But we have a question. Also, the Google Home Max doesn't have a screen. Mm -hmm. Question. Is there anything that um, Android-wise that this wouldn't run? No, this does not run anything specifically Android. It uses Android Things, which is the connected device. Like, it's the not, in not tablet, not phone, not media streamer interface. Uh, it is basically Google's version of Android that you run on things like a smart display that is just designed for the most simple, non-app driven stuff. So you can say, uh, Google, play some cat video. Hey Google, play a cat video from YouTube. Here's what I found on YouTube. And the Wi-Fi isn't uh, <laughs> super great at the moment because we are streaming, but hey. Yeah, so, and uh, then you can then tap on that to, to play whatever uh, video you want, and we'll see. But enough of that. Yeah, so basically what happens here is that the main benefit that you get, the, the main benefit that you get on this thing over, say the Google Home or the uh, Echo, is that you have this screen, you so that instead screen. of saying, Go uh, Google, send a cat video to my Chromecast and, and have, it, have it go on your TV, you can actually see it right here, and the other big benefit, as you mentioned, was the, is the Google Duo voice calls. Unfortunately, you can't use uh, Skype or anything else with that, so how, how really useful is that? Uh, it is more useful than drop in on the Echo Show because who uses Amazon's messaging system? Google Duo is, if you look at your Android phone now, it probably has Duo on it just because that's what Google's pressing at the moment. Okay, uh, so there is Hangouts? a wide audience there. 
maybe Android phone users. <laughs> yes, but how many people like know to use it? I mean, I'm still kind of used to using Hangouts, and that's kind of what I use for group messaging, even though they've stopped supporting it. Right. Google seems to cycle through messaging systems like on a yearly basis. They really have had an issue of catching like catching one that just keeps going, like FaceTime or messages or sure. just something that goes. So no. maybe they'll upgrade, update it in the future, but right now it's just Duo, so it's just point to point. You can call someone who has an Android phone and Duo installed. Video call, you can you know, call with voice, you can do that. You can't do group calls, you can't do Skype, you can't install separate apps. This is all just Google things, so whatever's on there is on there. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the 10-inch Lenovo Smart Speaker. Um, smart a, Display. Oh, sorry, Smart yep. Display. Brand new Google Assistant enabled uh, smart home device from Lenovo and Google. We'd like to take a question. Is there an HDMI port? There is not. This is a self-contained smart display. Uh, this screen is actually 1920 by 1200, so you got 1080p and like a little, you know, a little bit extra. So it gives you full HD. The eight-inch one is, I believe, uh, 1200 by 800. Might might be uh, 1280 by 800. So smaller. It's not full HD, but you still have like 720p-ish. What is on here, though, is Google Cast, so you can watch stuff on here besides just bringing stuff up with Google Assistant. You can cast anything from Hulu to Sling TV to Netflix from your phone or your computer to here. It shows up as a cast device, so that's nice. Now, speaking of that, the big question is a lot of people might have a fairly low-tech uh, device, but still tech device that lets them display photos, uh, uh, a digital photo album. How do you get your photos onto this? It works completely with uh, Google Photos, so you can just, uh, you can actually have this screensaver. Uh, it can be this, which is curated Google Photos, or it can be a clock, an analog clock or a digital clock, or it can be your own Google Photos just cycling through. You can show different, uh, you can show albums and it just comes up. You can have it manually display photos. You can just bring up things from your Google account. Uh, if you, ha you can't take, do messages yet, but it can do a uh, calendar. So if you have your Google Calendar connected to your account, you can say, hey, what's coming up? and it'll show you. Uh, it doesn't work with G Suite though, so that's kind of weird. Uh, a lot of these smart devices, uh, the Google Home didn't do it, uh, yeah. different home variants, they won't actually work with G Suite. So if your company has a, has a G Suite implementation, like uh, actually we do, to use all our, to put all our work, uh, email and calendar and all that stuff together, it actually can't come up on Google Assistant. It just has to be through a like personal Google account. Yeah, it's really interesting how much uh, either consciously or unconsciously Google is really segmenting the G Suite stuff and the business stuff versus home stuff. There is a whole nother range of devices just for G Suite users, conference room uh, setups, things like that, that are made in some cases by Google, ways to cast your, your, your phone or um, PC display to a conference room thing. It's all enterprise so far, stuff, yeah, so it's that's, not something you would buy at a store. That's completely separate. Really, this is just for home users. Looks like we've got another question. Where can it be purchased? Uh, I think it can be purchased pretty much anywhere. It should be available at Best Buy, Amazon, straight from Lenovo. Yeah, so basically the interesting thing, this just was announced uh, about an hour ago, two hours ago, uh, I believe, it, or not. I don't remember if it was announced an hour ago or if it was uh, like launched an hour okay. ago. Like we've Either, been kind of aware of it, but yeah. the point is that you know <laughs> this is new, so it'll be coming in the near future. Yeah. This is the final version, so don't worry about that. But if this is a new device, we'll probably see trickle into retail channels in the future. So yeah. keep an eye on uh, our side. We'll probably have some links to where to buy it somewhere at some point. But also Google sells stuff on their site and of course Lenovo yep. does as well. Um, but okay, so now we've got this. Is there any other, we've got this Lenovo uh, display here. Is there any other Google Assistant display that competes with this? Not yet. Uh, I can. Let's see if it'll answer. Uh, hey Google, <laughs> are there any other Google Assistant smart displays? Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that yet. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Lenovo smart display is the first one. This is like the only Echo Show, Echo Spot type thing we got going on from Google Assistant right now. We have a question. Does it send you notifications like other conversation agents? Uh, if Google Assistant does on its own, then it will. Otherwise, it's just all on here. I mean, it, it, it integrates with your Google account, but usually it's you're getting information sent to here. Uh, if Google Assistant, if you can send messages to your to your phone from uh, a Google Home or a Home Mini or a Home Max, then you can probably do it on here. Uh, 
But yeah, this is mostly for bringing up the stuff with Google Assistant, so. I mean, the question would be is, can you look and see, do you use reminders through, through your Google account? Can you look and see on here if those could display your upcoming tasks and your calendar? We can do that, yes. Okay, so. I mean, you, uh, but that shows it up on here. It's not going to like send cat. Uh, well, let's find out. Right, that's what I'm, I'm curious. Google Assistant. To see what the uh, calendar looks hey, like. Google. Set an appointment for 10 a.m. tomorrow. What's the title of the event? Whatever, I'm just doing a show. Sure, whatever, I'm just doing a show tomorrow at 10 a.m. <laughs> do you want to save that? Yes, I do. All right, it's on your calendar. And now it's on my calendar. Right, so you can't, yeah, so, and then presumably it will also tell you if you, if you set a 15 minutes before a reminder for that, um, that will, reminder would show up on your phone as well as this device. Well, it all goes through Google. So as yeah, long as your connected. account is connected to it, it'll pop up. That's just how Google works. If you have <laughs> G Suite, Google Calendar, Gmail, any of that stuff. Can we explain how Google, is this? Is there enough time to explain how Google works in the show? Or, or no, not? because even they're not entirely <laughs> certain. And by the time we're done shooting, they're probably going to have something new besides Duo for video chat. So yeah, we'll and that's, that brings us to, to at least for, for, for me personally, one of the major hangups I have with this, spending $240 on a dis smart display speaker yeah, two hundred fifty dollars um, on a smart display speaker right now seems a bit dicey to me because the, the the pace is moving so quickly. I mean, just two years ago was when Google introduced the Google Home, yeah. and now there's already a huge suite of things um, that you can use Google Assistant with. Google Assistant itself has gotten exponentially more powerful, so it's a great time to use Google Assistant. I just have a hard time, uh, uh, you know, stomaching that that two hundred fifty dollar price. But let's take another question. So on the whole, like your first impression of this, do you feel like this is going to be something that catches on? That's that's a weird question to add, to like answer because this is useful. I can definitely see a use for it, but the question for any consumer device is how likely is it that a lot of people will find a use for it? I have a uh, Amazon dot spot Amazon spot. Echo Spot, the, the little ball one with the two inch, uh, 2.5 inch screen and Alexa on it by my bed. It's basically my alarm clock. It's 130 bucks. This is obviously bigger. The eight inch one is a little bit smaller, but still about as big as an Echo Show. And the Echo Show is also a bit over 200 bucks unless you got it on Prime Day. So are you gonna spend that much for a smart display? It's probably not going to be your main display for stuff. I mean, I can certainly imagine if you have a big desk putting it there. So it's like, I'm gonna watch cartoons while I'm working on my computer, but you can also do that with a second monitor. This is very much a big mishmash device that lets you do things that are done by your phone slash a smart speaker slash a monitor slash just a whole bunch of different things. And it's useful, but very limited. You can't put apps on. This is all just Google things, Android things, uh, Google Assistant. So it's, are you going to find use in what you can do with it? And that expands and changes a whole lot. A lot of people find Alexa very helpful, but I gotta be honest, the main thing I use Alexa for is asking what the weather is that morning to know if I need an umbrella. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Can this set multiple timers? Yeah, I mean, it does That's time. That's a huge drawback well, of the actually, Google I think Home it is. is that it couldn't uh, set multiple timers. Hey Google, set a timer for one hour. Okay, one hour, and that's starting now. Hey Google, set another timer for three hours. Second timer for there three hours. There we starting go. Starting now. Hey Google, clear all timers. It looks like you have two timers. So which did you want to cancel? The Bo one hour one or the three hour one? Both of them. Sure, I canceled both of them. There that, you go, so that's, that's actually a huge nice benefit. Yeah. That's a nice thing about Google Assistant. The, the cadence and the diction and the context you need for this is a lot more friendly to human speech than Alexa. With Alexa, you really need to kind of recognize what it is expecting to hear from you, which is one of the reasons we kind of like Google Assistant more, yeah. even though Alexa has way more third-party support. It supports twice as many smart devices. That's another thing we didn't mention. You can actually bring up a Nest thermostat. You can bring up a smart, uh, an IP camera. You can bring up, you know, smart lights and change that with a touch screen and voice and very useful. You can also do it with an Echo Show too. Uh, but Alexa currently supports more of that and more third-party things. So you can order a pizza from that, not so much with this, unless there might be a third-party one on Google Assistant, but there ha there was one sooner on Alexa, and there are probably more on Alexa right now. Right. Alexa has had a head start with that, but Google is catching up. They're adding third-party uh, capabilities all the time. Still, though, I think that really, you know, the, to tap into the, to the power of the Google Assistant really doesn't require a screen. Um, you can get a Google Home. How much is a Google Home? 
Uh, Google Home regular Something is I think like one thirty. I it. think yeah. the Home uh, Mini is one is uh, fifty bucks, and the Home Max is four hundred. So which there is are way more powerful. Right. So there are multiple entry points into the Google Assistant ecosystem if you're interested in trying it out. Um, so, but this right here is the two hundred and forty dollar Lenovo Smart Display. We rated it four stars. We didn't give it another choice, but it's still a very excellent first attempt at creating a Google Assistant enabled speaker. This is a good device and hopefully in the near future we'll be looking at the 8 inch one which we did not review alongside this because we don't have it in the lab right now and it is a lower resolution not just a smaller screen so that might actually change how we look at it because this is a very crisp colorful past 1080p display. You know if it, if it looks more clearly pixelated on the smaller one maybe it's not as appealing. It's also 200 bucks so you know less expensive than the Google than the Echo Show but more expensive than the Echo Spot. And the Echo Spot is still our current editor's choice for this growing, limited, weird category of smart display type things that have a voice assistant on them. Yes, they are growing, limited, and weird, but they are useful. Definitely check out the full review of this and those other devices at PCMag.com. You'll find an entire roundup of smart home devices. And we would like to thank you very much for watching One Cool Thing today. And do not forget that we will be back on, fr on Monday, I'm sorry, on tomorrow, <laughs> Friday, <laughs> at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with yet another One Cool Thing to show off.